Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. In the next few minutes, we're going to discover how to import photos into Lightroom Classic that have already been downloaded from our camera cards using the operating system to an internal or external hard drive. We can see that in the operating system, I've already copied these photos from my camera card to this folder on my internal drive. In Lightroom, I'll choose File, Import Photos and Videos, or I can simply click the Import button. On the left of the import window, we can select the source to import from. Here, I'll use the arrow as a shortcut to navigate to the desktop, and then select the folder on the hard drive. Now, if we had an external drive attached, we would see a header for that external drive, and I could navigate to that drive and select a folder. Across the top, I'll choose to add the photos because they're already in the correct location, so there's no need to copy them. In the center, we can see the thumbnails of our images. To see one larger, we can double click on it to go to loop view, click to zoom in, and then we can use the hand tool to pan or move around our image. We can use the icons at the bottom of the preview area to return to grid view. We can choose what images to import so that if I only wanted to import a subset of images, I could uncheck them all, then select the first one, and then shift click to select a range of images. Then I'll click in the empty well to select them. But in this case, I want to select all of my images, so I'll choose to check all. We can also change the way that our images are sorted, and we can change the thumbnail size. In the lower left, we can see the number of photos as well as the file size of the import. Now on the right hand side, there are a number of additional panels. Under file handling, we can choose what size previews to build. We can choose minimal previews for the fastest preview in the grid view, or we can choose standard, which is great for viewing the images in full screen or in loop view. And if we know that we're going to want to zoom in and compare focus on all of our images, well, then I'll probably want to choose one to one. One to one will take longer to render, but we can let Lightroom Classic render these thumbnails in the background while we do something else. Then when we return to the folder of images, it might be smoother to edit or move between one image and another because we won't have to wait for any delays as Lightroom renders the thumbnails. I'll leave Build Smart Previews disabled for now because Lightroom Classic will build smart previews as they're needed. We could enable Don't Import Suspected Duplicates so that we don't import the same files more than once. We could also add images to a collection, which we'll discuss later in the series when we cover collections. As far as what to apply during import, we can apply develop settings such as presets that will change the way that our image looks. For example, we could convert all of our images to black and white. All of these presets are non-destructive and they can be changed at any time, but unless you want all of the images that you're importing to have the same preset, you may want to hold off on adding a preset here and do it later in the workflow. I would suggest that you add metadata like copyright and contact information. I'll choose new and then scroll down and add my information in the IPTC copyright and creator fields. I would recommend that you add your copyright, mark the files as copyrighted, and enter in the copyright info URL. Then enter in any creator information that you want to include with the photograph. There are many additional fields that you can fill in, so be sure to take the time to check out the different categories. Just remember that the metadata in the template that you add on import will be added to all of your images. So you might not want to enter information that's only applicable to a subset of the images that you're importing. Let's go ahead and create this new preset. And we can use this preset every time that we want to apply this information to our photos on import. We can also add keywords, but again, because we're going to apply these keywords to all of the images that we're importing, you might want to keep them very general, perhaps a client name, or in this case, a location. All right, let's go ahead and import our files and we can see a preview of the import. 
because we've already copied the files to our hard drive, it's going to be much quicker to import them into Lightroom because Lightroom doesn't have to make a copy of them. In the catalog panel, we can point out all of the photographs that Lightroom is now aware of. Now you might notice a slight color shift as Lightroom Classic builds the one-to-one -one previews. And this is because when you capture a RAW file, the camera software creates a preview of the image based on the settings in the camera, and it embeds that preview into the file. To display your images as quickly as possible, Lightroom Classic first displays that embedded preview. But then Lightroom Classic will create a high quality color managed preview of the files using the Adobe Color Profile, which often slightly changes the appearance. Now, if you prefer the initial rendering that's done by the camera, you can apply a different profile to your RAW files on import, or you can create a preset, or you can apply it to individual files, all which will be covered later in this series. All right, we can now see in the folder panel our new folder of images. And when we select that folder, we can see them in the film strip as well. So where are these photos? Well, they weren't moved on import, so they're in the exact same location. To confirm that, I'll choose Photo and then Show in Finder. Or on Windows, you would show in Explorer. And we can see that, in fact, there are our images on the hard drive. So there you go. It's just that easy to import or make Lightroom Classic aware of images that you've already copied to an internal or external drive.